hello guys and welcome back to my youtube channel my name is noye thank you so much for finding time to click on my video to watch if it's the first time on today's episode i have a guest please introduce yourself yeah my name is ola i'm a husband um a father of three and yes that's me okay so today we want to share the harsh realities of living in the uk well i've been here for just three months he's been here for about two years now 2021 2023 yes, yes about two years now so i've been here years. for only three months yeah. and we want to share some of the harsh realities of living in england we'll be right back so welcome back so and he would like to start with the very first harsh realities some of the things that some of us at back at home in nigeria so i thought it was real until we came here and then we realized that some of them are right but some are not exactly right so once just share some of them with you all right um i think the first reality um when i got here two years ago was um i found out that most of the people we see um back home in nigeria and we felt uh they're big boys they have that money yeah um when i got here i got to know that some of them are living in just one small apartment sometimes you see them they're driving good car and i, th I thought yeah they have, they have made it like people just came into the no, no, united Mark. kingdom and no, <laughs> they start Mark. picking pounds on the floor i found out hey it's not it's not that way most people are living on credit and um if you are credit worthy um if you have built your your um yourself very well on credit um you can you'll be able to afford almost every, anything you want like you could get a car and you pay just um 10 percent of that car and it could be spread for three four years for you to to pay off that car so in reality people that think that those who come in here come in and then pump they are very well no way it's not always true that they are very very well but another one is that people back home feel that when you come to the uk then you have so much money to throw around right they just believe that you can dash me 500 pounds they feel that 500 pounds is like 500 naira right when you just put your hand in your purse and yes, take 500 naira yes, and you say okay yes. my brother take this yes. some drink something no, or 500 five, pounds five is bigger than five it's not 500 naira. <laughs> so in their own mind like for some people in their own mind they're like it's not 500 pounds i have multiplied by what's the newest rate now i think 900 naira or 850 naira by the time i multiply it, i almost 450 k ah Oh, that's money give me 500 pounds how much is that one but they don't know that in reality 500 pounds is a lot and a lot and a lot of money for somebody living here so these are some of the harsh realities especially those that are not yet here <laughs> and thinking that there's money to throw around it's not exactly like five like the way you pick 500 naira from your from your purse and just say okay my, bro my brother or my guy take this 500 or take this one key 500 pounds is not like like that here i don't know if, if that makes sense yes, I, 500 naira is not the same as 500 pounds you. we saw a tiktok video where one guy after he collected his 2000 pounds um and then he um, salary and then after yes. he spent everything yeah, he had minus five pounds yes. left and then his friend called him and said guy give me 500 pounds now and i almost fainted like eh <laughs> give me pounds. somebody is only five pounds that's he says you give me 500 pounds so that's just the yeah. reality I, um, I think another um harsh reality is some um, bills here um bills payment bills payment uh, your internet your um your rent uh phone bills those are part of the things that um we spend a lot of money on here and at the end of the day we find out that we collected two thousand five hundred pounds three thousand pounds and um hey we spent like um 80 percent of it on bills yeah it's like your money comes to you and then it goes back to the system and that's what i've come to realize that's the harsh reality the moment you collect that pay it's like it's going back the moment the rent uh rent is taken off power bills and all the other bills everything just kind of fizzle back into the system you know that's what i've, I've seen or i've noticed 
Then another harsh reality is that some people come here and then they want to start comparing themselves with people that have been here for a longer period of time. Mm -hmm. You can't come to the UK and for me now, we're just three months old here. I can't compare myself with somebody who was born here now. Or I compare myself with somebody that has been here, maybe migrated here 10 years ago, 15 years ago. These people understand the system. Mm -hmm. They worked yeah. for a while. They've had savings. They've the system. grown with the system. They've bought houses. They've time, they've time anyway, of course, time is everything. And they've spent time. Well, calm down. You'll get the things that you want in due time. Then another harsh reality of living here is the weather. Huh. <sighs> yes. The weather, weather, yeah. Um, I remember um, someone said something to me uh, back at work. And that person says, never trust England's weather. Yeah, it is the same. So, um, you're going out, you found out it, it's sunny out there and you found out some people are going with their umbrella. umbrella yeah. It would be like, why are you going out this sunny? It's sunny. Why I you tell you, no, never, never trust London, um, yeah, England's weather. weather yeah. So you could just get halfway and it, start, it, starts, it starts to raining. rain. So um, it's one of the harsh reality. I permanently have a, an umbrella in my bag. Yeah, so so just get yourself prepared. Anything could happen on the way. And there, there are times I'll be going to work. It's a bit warm in the morning. And coming back home, I need to get like two, three yeah, layers jacket. Of, of jacket. It gets cold. Yes, because the weather might just change. change and yeah. yeah, it might be something you'll not be able to, to, to just manage to get home in. So get yourself prepared while, yeah, while going whenever. out there. Yes. Another harsh reality I see is with um, child care, raising children in this country and... Um, living generally in this country on in comparison to nigeria here you can carry your bag and say please i'm going out to mama something my child is there just let me keep an eye on my child and coming back hmm? <laughs> <laughs> unless you, you have family members us. and the person is not going to work or you are living with family members and, <laughs> and that's okay stay with my child and then here you can't try imagine if it's just both of us with the children we have to arrange our lives in such a way that the children must be put under concentration mm. and then the order of things in this country is that children the priority is first of all children women and then men unlike nigeria where it's a patriarch society <laughs> it is a man first ah for real, like, blah, 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 the man. yeah children women you see these two vulnerable people that are in nigeria they are put into concentration before you talk about a woman harsh reality so you cannot come here as a man come before me and the man have before the school call you as a man they would have called the mother it didn't be even shocky, guys. My husband did the registration for their for their health. It was one that filled the form and everything. I filled it and attached it to his name. I did my own application alone. When they wanted to give information for the children, it was me. Mm -hmm. When they wanted them to do the immunization, it was me they contacted. It's crazy. It was one that did the registration. It was me they called. <laughs> when they needed them to take why? their jabs, it was me they contacted. In fact, he didn't get any message. He was. Yeah, I just I got the message. I was like, ah, why are they sending me the message? You are the one that registered them. Yeah, it's, it's, it's me that they are contacting. In school, before they call him, it's if they can't reach me, mm -hmm. that's when they will look for me. Yeah, it's yeah. the last person they call. Hey, anything school, education, since I came with education, yeah. um, clinic, GP, yeah. the woman, yeah. the child yeah. and the woman. Then, before they now say, okay, we didn't reach the woman, let us talk to the man. Or like here in Nigeria where the man is put it because the man is the paycheck society. Ah, not the man, not the, yeah, just children. And then the, your wife. <laughs> And then the woman actually, you know, sometimes you even have information that he doesn't know. <laughs> I'll be the one to now share the information with him. In fact, in my other boys, them school, I have to insist, please, all these father's <laughs> details. It's not like they don't contact the father, but I think the first last. of all, it comes last. It comes last. They will consider the woman first or do contact first of all with that woman yeah. before yeah. they even contact the man. And that, that's how it works. And sometimes, even when you are on benefit, Mm -hmm. And they want to pay benefit to the children. They pay the woman. Yes, they're gonna they pay, pay the, the woman the, the benefit. As long as the yeah. children have a mother. As long as they have a mother. Yes, they have a mother. Yes, they pay into the mother's they account. Pay to yes. the mother. Yeah, they, they, they give high consideration <laughs> yeah. to women here. Uh, you know, gender uh, stuff here. Women first. The, um, well, uh, children first. Children and first women, women. Then men can, comes last. last. So for every man out there, um, that's 
quotes or uh, on quotes uh irresponsible yeah i'm yeah. sorry for them if they come to this country <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm talking about yeah. um, leaving your children with neighbor uh, have you noticed something that, you know that our de- next door neighbor we don't even see them we don't even know them you yeah. don't even know what they look like if you say ask and them I've to point living, at my neighbor i've been living in this apartment for um yeah a year now i guess a year, yes yeah yes it's going to make one year yes next, next month, month. Yeah. So, so yeah. I'll, I'll go to work, come back, just come inside, shut my door, and yeah. that's it. Uh, we're just living in. So, yeah. um, for everyone, so uh, I think it's, it's dangerous if someone is not, um, is not feeling fine, is sick, yeah. or something, and has gotten to that point of death, and there's no, no one around, to no neighbor to, to come and knock your knock door and say, How are you doing? But I think it's one of the, yeah. the if you are under the weather or you're sick, make yeah. sure you're, you're visiting your GP. Well, and this and one that he said now is one harsh reality that is shocking. You know why? If you call the hospital GP, you will hang on the line for a long time. This one, the healthcare is good, right? But access to it is what I've had for a bit. You know, imagine my children were here when we first came and were calling GP and calling and calling. Before we connected, I said, ah, why is it in this country to be alone? Somebody know where we they call GP, they call GP until I had to go into the facility and then booked an appointment. It's not in Nigeria where you say, ah, doctor, you know how we see in Nigeria, say, doctor, please oh, help me. Oh. Call, except if you have an emergency an emergency there's a different number to go if you have is and they'll have to interrogate to be sure that it is an emergency situation yes, they will interrogate it, you on it is a situation where yeah. it is truly an emergency yeah, yeah. and if the ambulance now are available they will tell you ambulance is not available i've heard that i've heard the case of somebody they told the person ambulance is not available in this london yeah. ambulance is not available you can bring the person I'm like eh? with all the gist i've heard about head care and everything my yeah. answer is missing like hey bring the person Yes, um, I think um, when it comes to um, calling for um, an ambulance to come and pick um, a sick person up, they are going to do a lot of interrogation and that might take a longer yeah. period of time for them to really ascertain that they need to send an ambulance to you because um, there are a lot of people that are in the hospital, they are attending yeah, to you and they are trying people. to avoid more people coming into the, uh, yes, into the hospital because yes, um, there are a lot of things people could you could just contact when you get to the hospital. So they are trying to make sure they do virtual um, prescription for you. So, so if you're and, sick, yeah. be sure you're taking care of yourself yeah, very, very well. well. Yeah, so that it doesn't result to get into the hospital. Because and the same thing with antibiotics. You can't pick antibiotics on the shelf. Yes. It must be prescribed. Know. Antibiotics in Nigeria. Organizationally, the people give me antibiotics there. Which how much is in there? How much? Pay and then you go. Here, you can't pick antibiotics from the shelf. It must be prescribed. And you have to go with your prescription. It's either they send the prescription to the pharmacy or you go with the prescription document and they will see that it is prescribed yes, by your GP. Your hey. mm. no so one, no one if you think you have um, a bacterial infection that, that requires antibiotics, maybe out of experience or instinct, you know, you know that okay, if I use antibiotics, I'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get to get it. So these are some of our harsh realities. We just thought to share them with you. So if you're back home and you're thinking that everything is all rosy and cool and fine, this place is he- is not heaven. Oh, what do they call? It? What do they call? It? Like living a, a, a castle in the air. It's not like okay, building castles in the <laughs> building air. Building castles in the air. It's not heaven. But then one of my friends, they sleep better past death at least. But it's still better living here. Yeah. Yeah. My opinion, it's still better yeah. living here. But yeah. then it's not heaven. It's still yeah. we're still on yeah. earth. Yeah. We're still on walking on the ground. The sky is yeah, still, still blue. There. Yeah. <laughs> there's tree. There's rain. There's sun. There's water. They're human beings. Yeah. So it's not heaven. And then everything is not like perfect, perfect, perfect. We're going to talk about some of the things that we enjoy about living here in the United Kingdom kingdom that will be in another video until that video is ready we'll see you all in that video thank you and please don't forget to subscribe it's bye for us for now subscribe don't subscribe and please share yours in the comments we'll see you later bye bye bye